What's going on guys? Believe it or not, it has almost been a year since I started this channel. Almost 365 days since I argued that the Bucks should trade Mike Budenholzer after winning a title. I feel like that's still debatable um, at this point. Still unclear how much he contributes to that team given that they have the best player on the planet in Giannis. But that is neither here nor there. The point is, I kind of like to return to what I was doing back in the day and kind of give, you know, off-season outlooks for every team in the NBA. Give them a little love. Talk about, you know, what the expectations are going into the season. Take a look at some of, you know, the deals and moves and free agency they've made. Stuff in the draft. You know, things like that. Kind of see, you know, what we're working with with all 30 teams in the association. Figured, you know, last year was all kind of willy-nilly. Could add some structure this year. Thought we'd start in the East go into the standings, work our way down, then we'll go and head out west. But that means today we're going to South Beach, take a look at the Miami Heat. Now, obviously, pretty brutal loss in the Eastern Conference Finals to the Boston Celtics. That Jimmy Butler transition three doesn't fall. Who knows what the alternative history would be had that gone down. Still don't know if the Heat could, you know, win a seven-game series against Golden State, but... You know, it's a tough way to go out. And, you know, this offseason pretty much brought back most of their guys. Oladipo on a two-year deal, Kale Martin on three years, and Dwayne Dedman on two as well. But I do think kind of the biggest free agent from the Heat was P.J. Tucker. And he's the one they lost to Philadelphia. And I do think that is going to be a very difficult void to fill for them. You know, it seems like every... Every single playoffs, P.J. Tucker kind of reinforces his own importance to any to whatever team he's on. He's gone all over the place, always been important, especially in the playoffs, guarding you know the opposing team's best player and trying to limit them as much as possible. And Miami, you know, they have this kind of heat culture, that kind of grit and defensive-minded guys, and obviously that's reflected in Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo, but... You know, Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson are, are co kind of components, but they don't really fit that mold as much. And I think losing a guy in P.J. Tucker, who's almost, you know, the epitome of that mindset, it's going to be really tough. Um, I do think healthy Victor Oladipo is going to be really helpful. And a healthy Kyle Lowry, in my opinion, is kind of the key here, assuming, you know, the Heat don't do some kind of blockbuster trade, which we'll get into later. Kyle Lowry was kind of, you know, hobbled by injuries this year. Playoffs didn't look like himself much. And so, you know, if he's firing on all cylinders, he's knocking down shots, he's defending at a high level, you know, that is huge for this Heat team because, you know, we kind of saw in that Celtics series, this team lacks shot creation. You know, a lot of those guys can knock down open looks. Robinson, Struess, Hero... But, you know, they relied a lot on Jimmy Butler to try and create for himself and to create for others. And it just got became a really stagnant offense. You know, Bam out of bio kind of floated in and out of games at times. And so if they can get Bam and Kyle Lowry on the same page playing consistent basketball and healthy basketball, I think that would be, you know, pay huge dividends down the stretch. Now, whether they look at Kyle Lowry and try and deal him, if it's him and two first for Kyle, you know, Kyrie Irving, don't hate that. I think, you know, the Nets would be more willing to listen to that than the Westbrook deal just because Kyle Lowry's a little less money, a little more of a complimentary piece and personality than uh, Russell Westbrook, which, you know, most people are. But at the end of the day, I think uh, Kyle Lowry would be a huge, huge piece in that kind of, you know, circumstance now of course in the headlines Miami has been this trade destination for kind of each star that has now become on the block whether it's Kyrie KD Donovan Mitchell and it's the same package that's flowed out there every time it's Tyre Hero it's Duncan Robinson you know Kyle Lowry maybe maybe not Omer Yurt seven and then some you know some draft capital a couple picks because they don't have all their picks they can't offer kind of the huge like four or five first kind of deal. And so it really hinges upon how much you value Tyler Hero. 
and how much these teams value him. And, you know, I think he's not someone that has come off a great playoff run, didn't have the most like exceptional playoff run with Miami. He's kind of a good shot creator. You know, he scores, you know, your 20 points a game um, off the bench. But I don't know if anyone's convinced he can be a one or two or three on a winning team. And, you know, he's going to be in the last year of his contract. You're going to have to pay him quite a bit of money. I think that scares teams. Not sure he's the guy you feel confident about giving max or near max money. And so I'm not sure Miami really has the kind of package that would land a Kyrie, a Donovan Mitchell, or a KD, even though those guys all seem to want to play there. And, you know, that's really fair because of the culture they've established, because Eric Spolster and Pat Riley are two of the best at their respective jobs. It's a great place um, to play, to live. And so, yeah, it's, it's understandable that it gets thrown in there, but I think both Brooklyn and Utah are going to be taking the best offer. They're not going to be really, I don't think, taking too much consideration into where their guys want to go. So I don't really think as cool as it would be to pair a third star of that caliber to Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. Just don't see it happening. Get that out there right now. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about, you know, Miami did draft Nikola Jovic. If I hear one more freaking joke about you know, it's one letter off from Nikola Jokic, I swear to God. Um, we get it. They have very similar names. And like, ha-ha, um, can't wait till Miami and Denver get to play. And Nikola Jokic can also just give this guy shoulder in the back for all the bullshit that we've had to hear about this. Um, but that aside, really dynamic, kind of interesting guy in terms of the kind of point forward mold. High upside, not sure how much he's going to play kind of right out the gates. Obviously, they already have a pretty set seven-man rotation. I don't think he's been overly impressive in summer league, but obviously still young um, and still trying to find kind of what he looks like in, in, in the NBA. Um, but definitely an interesting piece. I think good value at the 27th pick. So we'll take a look kind of, you know, if he can be that kind of shot creator, power forward, I think that would be huge for them. Not sure, you know, if he can develop that to where, you know, they're going to be trying to win now. So not sure he can develop that that quickly, but if he kind of shows flashes and can be on that second unit during the regular season, you know, Gabe Vincent's really solid. Max Struess is really solid. Um, you know, they can get quality minutes out of their second unit and hopefully not put too many miles on their stars because Jimmy Butler's getting up there. Kyle Lowry already mentioned kind of how old he is, and hopefully he can, you know, kind of uh, get back to form. But I think the kind of key here for Miami is kind of alleviate the pressure from Jimmy Butler to create so much, and that's going to fall on Bam. It's going to fall on Kyle Lowry. Victor Oladipo, you know, if he can stay healthy, can also do a little bit more of that creation. And hopefully Duncan Robbins can shoot better, make that contract not look as ugly. Um, could see him getting moved maybe around the deadline because there's always going to be teams that need shooting. It's just a matter of whether he can knock down enough shots to kind of, you know, justify that contract. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. There's obviously some moving parts here, but they're kind of hamstrung by the lack of picks in terms of trying to make a big deal. But Miami's always going to be in the mix. Eric Spolster is always going to have his guys ready. And regardless, they had a ton of injuries, ton of adversity this year, still got the one seed. So don't expect anything less from them this year. They're going to be a title contender. It's just a matter of if they can stay healthy, put it all together. I'm excited to see what they, what they bring to the table. Let me know what you think. Where do you see Miami Heat landing in the Eastern Conference standings? Can they land a big star? Love to hear it. But for now, that's it for me. Take care of yourselves. Take it easy. And I'll see you next time.